When you hear the word Pixar, what do you think of? You probably think of Woody, or Buzz, or Tomater, because same. But I also think of Remy, not my dog Remy, this rat Remy. Remy is one of the most unbelievable rats I've ever seen. I've never seen a rat cook like that. I've never seen a rat smell like that. I've never smelled a rat that smelled like that. I remember the first time I ever saw this movie. It was in the theater and I was nine years old. And guess what? I thought it was a masterpiece. Right as the movie ended, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, I have to pee really, really bad. While peeing out what felt like gallons on gallons of urine, I remember thinking to myself that this movie was more than just a movie. It was an experience. This movie taught me things, things that no other movie had taught me before. This movie taught me about pleasures, how to pleasure myself with food by eating good food instead of garbage. This movie taught me how to cook like a rat. It taught me what each cook was called in the kitchen so that when I meet someone who loves food, I can sound intelligent by naming everyone in the kitchen. That's Dave. That's Michael over there. Greg. But most importantly, this movie taught me that I could do anything I dreamed of, no matter who I was or where I came from. Now, I've been this movie for long enough, so let's get into it. So like I mentioned before, this movie is about a rat but no ordinary rat. Remy walks on his hind legs so when he touches his food, his hands aren't dirty. As a kid, I used to walk on all fours because I wanted to be like Simba from The Lion King, but Remy inspired me to appear more human. Remy has a gift, a smelling gift. He can smell better than any other rat in the galaxy. He reads cookbooks and watches the cooking channel. He looks up to this famous chef, Gusteau. Gusteau is fat and lovable, but then he dies. His motto was anyone can cook. Remy's brother Emile is fat and lovable too, but in a rat way. So they go up to the roof of this old lady's house and smoke it up on the chimney. But while they're up there, they get struck by lightning. This causes Remy to appear like he has done 10 lines of coke. He's hyped up about how good the lightning struck food is. He wants another hit, but with some more ingredients from the house that belongs to this old hag. While in the house, the hag wakes up from her nap and sees them. She gets her shotgun and starts going to town with it, shooting up her entire house. She shoots her house so much that her ceiling caves in, revealing that the entire rat colony was living in her attic. Aww, look at all the cute little rats. That's so cute. He gets stranded in the sewer and starts hallucinating, talking to Gusteau. He decides to leave the sewer because he's starving and needs a snacky poo. He goes outside and realizes he was in Paris all along. The city of love. Remy stumbles upon a window into the kitchen of Gusteau's restaurant. Then we meet Linguini. Linguini is the greatest character to ever be in a movie. So Linguini gets a new job at Gusteau's as the garbage boy. He's mopping and popping and locking and he's a clumsy dumsy humpty dumpty type, you know? He accidentally spills the soup and he tries to fix it, but he's a worse cook than Uncle Jimmy. Meanwhile, Remy gets so excited that he falls into the kitchen and is almost brutally killed multiple times. Everything is moving super fast, so I was panicked and scared for what was going to happen to his rat ass. After getting felt up by the waiter, he sees an opening in the window past the soup. However, Linguini's not a real sauce boss, so the soup that he makes is such an abomination Remy can barely walk past without hurling. So he adds a little something and runs for it. Wait, wait, if he can just add one more thing. Skinner is is the head chef of Gusteau's after his passing. Brad Bird, the director of the movie, loves to make the dick characters super short in his movies. So the soup that Remy made gets sent out to a customer and Skinner thinks that Linguini made it, so he's pissed. But the soup ends up being bomb. 
and the customer was a critic. Skinner's still pissed because he doesn't trust Linguini, but Colette has his back. Colette is the toughest cook in the kitchen. She speaks her mind, she's strong, independent, beautiful, thick. Linguini puts Remy in a glass jar to chuck him in the river, but then he says animal rights. This is the start of the iconic duo. Linguini gets the idea to have him cook for him, and so he lets him go. But Remy is sneaky weaky squeaky at first and tries to escape, but then he looks back at Linguini, so he decides to stay. Beautiful moment for them. Linguini says let's take this back to my place, and his apartment is but actually dope. The next morning, Linguini brings Remy to work and puts him in his pants at first, which makes him walk funny. Ooh! Linguini killing it with the dance moves. Remy hits him with the nippy, tippy, itchy, bitchy, and Linguini runs to the cooler and rips his shirt open. This is the point of the movie where they find out Remy can control Linguini's arms by pulling his hair. It's strangely involuntary. This is really where the movie starts cooking. <laughs> Meanwhile, Skinner is selling out by selling Gusto's corn dogs and burritos and Chinese food, but eventually finds out that Linguini is Gusto's son. Then Skinner keeps seeing the rat everywhere, but Linguini's actual hidden talent is Magician's sleight of hand. He's really talented with his hands and he gets real handsy with Remy by switching him out with everyday objects. So when Skinner does the double take, Remy's gone. Where did he go? So Skinner starts thinking he's crazy. Skinner tries to get a confession out of Linguini by getting him wine drunk, but Linguini doesn't budge. He snapped. Later, Remy goes with a meal to the new rat colony, and it's lit. It has tables and waiters and a rat band with a pencil player and a paperclip player. Next morning, Linguini is too hungover to wake up, so Remy has to control his sleeping body, and Colette is trying to have a deep conversation with him. He looks like a meanie pants and gets slapped. You just got slapped Whoa. across the face, my friend. Whoa. You just got slapped. Whoa. Yes, that... Then a great scene where Linguini runs out and tells her that he loves her on accident. I, I would have followed your advice to the ends of the earth because I love you! Your advice. He is about to tell her about Remy, so Remy makes him kiss her. Ooh, Remy is the ultimate wingman. Later, Remy stumbles upon the letter revealing that Linguini is Gusto's son. Skinner walks in and chases him all around Paris. Remy gets away and Linguini takes over the restaurant and Skinner is fired. The end. Sorry? Then we meet Anton Ego, the food critic that got Gusto's five star rating lowered to a four. That son of a. As Linguini says, he's skinny for someone who likes food. What's his comeback? I don't like food, I love it. If I don't love it, I don't swallow. Linguini starts listening to Colette more than Remy, and Remy gets jealous. So he rebels against Linguini by stealing more food from his restaurant. He lets the rats into the fridge and Emile sucks down like 50 grapes. Linguini catches them when something falls on Emile and the grapes shoot out of him like a machine gun, which causes Linguini to tell Remy he's gotta go his own way. Then we get to Linguini gives probably the worst speech in history. Remy goes back to the restaurant to help. His dad asks, why do you care? Because I'm a cook. Ego orders perspective, but the waiter doesn't know what that means and neither do I. So he tells him to bring him whatever he dares to serve him. Hit me with your best shot. Linguini tells them all the truth. They all quit. He goes to the office in defeat. Colette drives away on her motorcycle and stops at a red light. She turns and sees Gusto's cookbook in the window. It reads, anyone can cook. She realizes that she was wrong to judge Linguini and Remy. It doesn't matter that he's a rat. Anyone, literally anyone can cook. Simple as that, it doesn't matter if you aren't a human. Remy's dad and gang come to the kitchen to help Remy. They all go through the dishwasher before cooking to get rid of that nasty rat smell. One group takes out the health inspector after he walks in on hundreds of rats in the kitchen. Linguini comes out in shock and instantly goes full on boogie nights waiting tables on roller skates. Colette comes back and helps because anyone can cook, damn it. Remy wants to serve ratatouille to Ego, but it's a peasant's dish. Who cares, he's a rat. Ego tries the ratatouille and gets transported to his childhood when his mom made it for him after falling on his bike. Back in present day, he smiles and eats the whole thing, licking his plate and sucking his fingies. He asks to thank the chef, and Linguini and Colette decide to tell him he can only meet the chef after all the other customers have left. He agrees and waits. 
After everyone leaves, they show him Remy. When the story ends, he gets up and leaves without another word. He gives a glowing review. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little, yet enjoy opposition over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and read, but the bitter truth we critics must face is that in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. But there are few times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery and defense of the new. The world is often unkind to new talent, new creations, and new friends. Last night I experienced something new, an extraordinary meal from a singularly unexpected source. To say that both the meal and its maker had challenged my preconceptions about fine cooking is a gross understatement. They have rocked me to my core. In the past, I have made no secret of the disdain for Chef Cousteau's famous motto, Anyone can cook. But I realize only now do I truly understand what he meant. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. It is difficult to imagine more humble origins than those of the genius now cooking at Gusto's, who is, in this critic's opinion, Nothing less than the finest chef in France. I will be returning to Gusteau's soon. Hungry for more. But then Gusteau's gets shut down after letting the health inspector out. They open a new restaurant where Ego comes to order Remy's ratatouille. The restaurant's called Le Ratatouille. I love the message of the film, and this message can be used for anything, not just cooking. It's Pixar's most mature film, and by far, their best.